Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I've got a Collins ATC transponder to take apart. This one was removed from a Merlin 3 twin turboprop. This transponder is a mode C transponder for communicating with air traffic control. It sends information about the aircraft's ground speed, altitude, heading, and the aircraft's call sign. Voice communications to air traffic control is handled by a different transponder called the VHF transponder. I took apart one of these in a previous video. So basically what this box does is it takes the information from the other computers on board the aircraft, which figure out the altitude, heading, ground speed, and that stuff. And this box takes that information, processes it, turns it into a radio frequency signal. It amplifies that radio frequency signal, and then it goes to the antenna on the outside of the aircraft. All right, let's take a closer look. This is the TDR90 transponder. We have a nice handle here. And here's our information tag. This is three and a half pounds. Right here we have our antenna connector. On the back here we have a nice multi-pin connector. On the top here we have some servicing information. You can see it was last serviced in California in 2016. Here we have a slightly older service tag here from 2010. Okay, now that I have rotated the locking screws 90 degrees, I can pull off the cover. Here's the cover. You can see we have lots of holes for air circulation to help keep it cool. All right, so here's the inside. We have a big cover here and some interesting looking stuff up here. On the other side, we have a really big PCB with tons of logic chips on it. On the top here we have some labeling for the potentiometers that can be adjusted. In order to take out this PCB I have to take off this front piece here. We have six screws holding it on. Here's the front piece. This looks like it's made out of a piece of extruded aluminum. Now that I've undone the six screws holding on the PCB I can lift it out. You can see over here we have some connectors for connecting to this array of pins here. So here it is. Here's the back of the PCB. Pretty old school layout. We have some cutouts here to make more room for these capacitors. On this board you can see that we have a lot of these nice ceramic logic chips. Over here we have some passive components along with some transistors and op amps which are these slightly bigger cans here. We have a adjustment potentiometer here. We have some crystal oscillators here. And you can see tons of resistors over here. You can also see that this board has a conformal coating on it to help protect it. Looking at the four digit date codes on these chips tells us that this unit was made in 1981. The first two digits is the year, and the second two digits is the week. So all these logic chips here are going to be doing a few different things. Mainly they're going to be doing data processing, encoding, and signal modulation and demodulation. Also some of these chips are going to be used for control and interface logic so that this transponder can correctly be integrated into the aircraft's avionics system. Alright, so after looking up the part numbers on the chips, I've made this diagram with the functions of each individual chip. You can see a lot of the chips are used multiple times in this design. For example, here we have a whole entire row of shift registers. Let's take a look at what was underneath that board. Starting from the right over here, we have those pins, which it looks like most of them go to the connector on the back here. Looks like we have a lot of inductors in here. We have some smaller components like these resistors, a few transistors. We have two higher power transistors. We have a big capacitor here. As you can see, we also have another little inductor here. It's mounted on these little bent up pieces of aluminum. It looks like we have a big toroidal transformer here. We have some more capacitors and an inductor. And we have this part here which looks interesting. 
It's the high voltage assembly. What I believe this is for is generating the high voltage needed to drive the uh, amplifier tube, which is in here. Over here on this wiring to the toroidal transformer, we have some ferrite beads. All right, let's take a look at this side. We have this metal shield on this assembly, which I can actually just pop off really easily without removing any screws. You can see that there's some little pieces here which clamp onto these tiny little posts on the side here. And here's what's underneath. We have a circuit board assembly. You can see we have a lot of passive components here, a lot of resistors and capacitors. We also have a lot of transistors in these little cans. You can also see we have a lot of these little devices. These are actually variable capacitors. So you can adjust the capacitance by adjusting this screw here. We also have regular trimmers up here for making adjustments. So these two little yellow wires here are actually high frequency connections. You can see that this brass mesh here is acting as the outer ground conductor to bridge the ground from this grounded shielding here and the top conductor of this board here, which is ground. Now that I've unscrewed the six screws and desoldered the high frequency connections here, I can take this board off. And here's those little mesh pieces. Here you can see the pins which connect this board to the rest of the assembly. Here's the back side of that board. You can see that the solder mask is coming off in a lot of spots on here. On the back here you can see we have a lot of passive components. You can also see we have a small little trimmer in here which is accessible with this hole here. It looks like we have two screws here holding on this high voltage assembly. So now that I have removed those screws I can pull this block up a little bit. Still can't get it out because there's wires connecting to it. But you can see it's potted in this semi-transparent potting compound. So you can see there's two capacitors in there. So this might be a voltage multiplier. So my guess is that this toroidal transformer contains a set of high voltage windings which step up the voltage. And the high voltage then goes through these red wires here going to this voltage multiplier. And then from there it goes over here to the RF triode. And the RF triode uses the high voltage to amplify the radio frequency signal. So you can see that our main high frequency connector is going to this flat piece here. I think this is some sort of rigid flat coax that they're using here. If you look closely here, you can see the high frequency coax coming from the triode is connecting into this flat coax piece. You can see there's a physical break in it my guess is that the brake is used to isolate the high power RF signal from the low power RF signals from these yellow wires. Alright, so it looks like I can take out this cavity here if I take out these screws on the top and the bottom. So here is the output high frequency high power coax line. You can see that it goes down here and it goes into that flat rigid coax. So here's the low level RF going into the triode. You can see that we have some sort of component here under shrink wrap. So we have two high voltage wires powering the triode here. The first one is this wire and the second one is this wire. If you look closely here, the low level RF input is this white coax wire here behind the high voltage wire. So if we follow that white coax wire, we can see that it follows the bottom of this unit down here and it connects to two of these pins here. We also have another high frequency wire underneath here which is connecting to those six pins that go into this board here. So both those coax wires are connected to this array of pins here. All right, let's take a closer look at the cavity. You can see that we have a lot of screws and adjustments. I think these two are adjustments of some sort. We have six screws holding on this piece here. 
and I believe this is the first piece that needs to come out. So I'm gonna take out those six screws and see if I can pull it out. Okay, so I just about have it out. Just a little bit more. Wow, look at that socket. It looks like this might be silver plated too. The socket connects to the triode's cathode and supplies it with high voltage to power the heater. Here you can see the top of the triode where this socket connected to. We also have this aluminum ring which connects to the tube's grid. You can also see that the low level RF input goes to that metal ring inside. It looks like there's some sort of insulating material between the outer case and that metal ring. That is so the low level RF does not short out with the ground. So here's that aluminum ring. You can see the contacts here and the capped on tape around it. So let's take a look in here. So there you can see the bottom of the triode. It's nice and gold plated. And to remove this, it actually just unscrews. Wow, isn't that nice? Gold-plated and white ceramic. This is the Y503 transmitting planar triode for military applications. You can see that this part screws in to that piece in there. So this last piece here is going to be the anode. And we have the grid and the cathode. We do have thermal compound on the screw piece. Usually these triodes will have a heat sink stack on them for dissipating the heat. But in this case it's not necessary because it screws into this big block of metal here which connects to this whole entire metal piece which I guess is sufficient to cool it down. Here's the back of the cavity. You can see where the high voltage wire is connecting to the anode. I would also imagine that this little metal piece in here is also isolated from this main body here. Over here on the side of the cavity we have an adjustment to change the capacitance between the anode and the cavity itself which is ground. You'll notice here that our high voltage RF output wire actually connects to this little metal tab in here that's just sort of floating inside the cavity. That's because this metal center part here is also going to be energized as the anode. So the anode and that air gap between it and that little strip of metal are going to act as a capacitor. We also have this little adjustment here. This is to move the tab of metal closer or farther away from the anode to adjust the capacitance. Alright guys, that's about it for this video. I hope you learned something and thanks for watching.